call it because it was Uno all those stereo? years ago. Yes, it's so one of the first, first stereo recordings. Stereo, okay. yes, that's the word I was looking for. And, <laughs> and the Boston Symphony, all the chairs were out on the floor, uh -huh. and they were down in the middle of the floor, and the chorus was up with our way on the stage. Mm -hmm. And we recorded for an hour and a half, and Merch said, sit them for the evening. Mm -hmm. And we were going ahead, and I think it was Leonard Burke, I don't know, it was the guy, Richard, Richard Moore, who was the um, director of, of RCA Dictor, mm -hmm. the classical mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. Dick Moore, he had, he had a wonderful ear and was a wonderful uh, musician, and he really knew his stuff so well. And he said, let's give it one more try. And of course, I had been working like everything to get them to go, not with his beat, but a little bit ahead of his beat. Mm -hmm. See, they were going with the sound of the orchestra to them, and mm -hmm. it came back. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's still That was really, I mean, and I remember Richard Moore saying, thousand dollars or thousands of dollars are, are at risk here. You mm -hmm. have to. And we did it mm -hmm. at that wow. time. Wow. I'd like really to hear the recording. Wow. Yeah. 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 It was the first big stereo recording made of, you know, big big orchestra, big chorus, and so on. And uh, I guess RCA put a lot of money into it. Hmm. Then you were going to ask I was going to ask you about my, Michael Tilson Thomas, who you oh. also work with extensively. <laughs> you know, he was what, 26 or 7 uh -huh. when he was, when I first knew him. And where was this? At BSO. It was a BSO, he was, he okay. Was the assistant I see, he was conductor. the assistant conductor, right. That's yes. right. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. <laughs> but, oh, he, um, very interesting, the, the head of the conservatory then was, was Al Ferris, Jim Al Ferris. His wife was one of the secretaries of the, of the symphony. And she was great. She loved the, Michael and sort of befriended him because William Steinberg had been hired by them, mm -hmm. but he was an old little man, mm -hmm. and he became very ill. So suddenly they were without a conductor, and, and Michael was the, he was so young. And he did the most wonderful programs. Mm -hmm. I mean, he did Les Nos, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Stravinsky. Yeah. He did the, final, the last Stravinsky piece, which I can't remember the name of. Well, 12 tone. Okay. And he did the... Uh, Monteferdi Vespers, which was hard. It didn't work in Symphony Hall. It needed a church to be done. Mm -hmm. But we loved it. I mean, it was a good performance. Mm -hmm. And he um, did a bunch of, I think before that concert, he had our madrigal group, 16 singers, out in front of the stage at Symphony Hall to sing La Chate Mi Morire. <laughs> <laughs> he was showing me. <laughs> and uh, then Le Nostris. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Which is a tough and, piece, too. Pardon me? A tough piece. The, oh, the notes. gosh. The, yeah. <laughs> I, I have a piece about John Oliver uh -huh. on that. Because uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I kept him on it for almost three months because I, he had one on one lessons. Mm -hmm. And it, the beat was so tough mm -hmm. and changing all the time. Mm -hmm. He said, Can I stop this? Please take me <laughs> off this. I said, No, you have to be able to conquer this. Uh -huh. I kept him on it. Years later, uh, Jones, the woman that conducts at uh, BU. Mm -hmm. Martha uh, Jones? Uh, her last name is Jones. Yeah. Or, yeah. Uh, had him there to talk to the conduct her conducting class at BU. Mm -hmm. And he talked about analyzing the lead mm -hmm. horse. <laughs> he put so much work into it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> anyway, talk about it. I strayed from it. No, no. It's okay. <laughs> So, uh, so, maybe to switch Oh, no, they, they, okay. oh Michael. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I remember that, that Mrs. Al Ferris gave a big farewell party for him because I think he either went to New York or he went to Buffalo from there because he spent quite a few years in Buffalo and that's where he got on weeds and, and was in trouble. Okay. Like, what do you call drugs? Okay. And then went to New York and got got well, mm -hmm. and then San Francisco. 
I think he's been there for what, 20 years now? At least, yeah. Yeah, it's 20 yeah. years. Yeah. Okay. And he just fabulous. We went to hear his program on his grandparents. Mm -hmm. The uh, Tomaszewskis. Okay. And his grandmother, Jess, Bessie, or Jessie, when it, was married to his grandfather when she was 16. And they formed this, this uh, stage company uh, doing shows in, in Yiddish and doing Shakespeare plays in Yiddish. And he got sick when it was early on at the Tomaszewski mm -hmm. and she did Hamlet Mm. Age of sixteen in Yiddish, wow. <laughs> she was Hamlet. I heard I heard him on the radio talking about that piece. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Does he yeah. told that? Yeah, so he had wonderful stories yeah. about it. Yeah. And this uh, this show was awfully good. It was in the um, Ozawa Hall at Tanglewood, mm -hmm. the other one. Sure. And uh, <laughs> oh, he was he was full of wonderful Tomaszewski stories. And I don't remember. That's the one. Sticks with me most. Okay. I wish I could. I wish I'd written down more of my memories. I haven't. Hmm. Well, can I ask you a little bit about working with David Hodgkins at NEC? Oh, David! I loved working with him. It was my last two years, I think. And I was a little tired. My husband was very ill. Mm -hmm. He was both uh, very, very depressed. He'd had an accident, and uh, don't print this. Well. No, he was he was very old. 